without the discipline. Anyone who's ever run knows you don't decide to run a marathon one day and do it the next. It takes time and discipline to get ready for the 26.2 miles. Without the discipline of training, the would-be runner can do him or herself great harm. Runners have to start slow, but they have to run and run again. A runner has to stretch. A runner has to make time to run. It takes discipline. Discipline, that's not always a welcomed word, but it is a necessary one. It's the same for our spiritual lives. Spiritual growth does not happen automatically, but we grow in Christ-likeness as we discipline ourselves to follow and obey Him. In the study, Spiritual Disciplines Becoming More Like Jesus, we will look at several disciplines others followed that brought them into a closer walk with God. Join us as we seek to truly become more like Jesus. Anyone who's ever run knows you don't decide to run a marathon one day and do it the next. It takes time and discipline to get ready for the 26.2 miles. Without the discipline of training, the would-be runner can do him or herself great harm. Runners have to start slow, but they have to run and run again. A runner has to stretch. A runner has to make time to run. It takes discipline. Discipline, that's not always a welcomed word, but it is a necessary one. It's the same for our spiritual lives. Spiritual growth does not happen automatically, but we grow in Christ-likeness as we discipline ourselves to follow and obey Him. In the study, Spiritual Disciplines Becoming More Like Jesus, we will look at several disciplines others followed that brought them into a closer walk with God. Join us as we seek to truly become more like Jesus. Anyone who's ever run knows you don't... Bless the Lord. Pleasant good evening, everybody, and a happy new year 2021. God is good. Hallelujah. Welcome to Digital Discipleship 2021. Hallelujah. We're so glad you can be with us today as we learn about spiritual discipline, spiritual discipline. Amen. And uh, our text is Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 16. We'll look at it in a few minutes. Just peace. Okay, get it up for you in a little bit. Amen. Are we so glad you can join us just want you to know in the month of February, we'll be moving the time of digital discipleship. We'll be on the Zoom platform um, on a Monday evening at 8 p.m. So we're going to continue this month. Today's our first day, but we are moving in the month of February to the Zoom platform. Amen. So let's look at God's Word today. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 to 16. So the topic we are discussing today is the benefits, the benefits of spiritual discipline. Amen? The benefits of spiritual discipline. So we are in 2021. That means 2020 is behind us. I hope it is behind us. <laughs> Many of us would like to forget 2020, but it did happen. Many of us are glad to see the past year behind us. Let's hope and pray that the things of 2020 will be behind us as well. Amen. We have to pray and pray hard. Even though it's a new year, we can rest assured that spiritual disciplines are timeless. We, as we start this new series this week, looking at spiritual discipline, we begin this week by looking at the timeless truth concerning spiritual discipline so that we are equipped to practice them regularly. That's why we call them spiritual disciplines 
discipline, something to be practiced. Amen? So let's read the Word of God for a little bit, and we guarantee it. It says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your salvation with what fear and trembling. Notice those words that we got to work it out. It seems like when you go to the gym, you work out to build muscles and to tone up and to get in shape. Well, Paul is suggesting to us and recommending to us that we work out our salvation with what fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and do his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing. That you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom he shine as lights in the world, holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I may have run not in vain, neither labor in vain. Amen? So the first thing we want to note about spiritual disciplines is that it needs to be practiced. Verse 12 again, it says, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out. So we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Spiritual discipline needs to be practiced on a daily basis. It, it, it must not be a once-a-week practice or once-a-month practice or when we go to church practice, but we need to practice it every day of our life. Now, starting a new routine can be intimidating, especially if this is something that you have never done before. If, however, you are familiar with the routine, then the task does not seem so daunting. The church at Philippi was familiar with what needed to be done. As Paul told them, you have always obeyed. Amen? You have always obeyed. He was encouraging them to build upon their history of obedience to God's word. So that's a good place to practice spiritual discipline. You have obeyed God in the past. So in 2021, continue to obey Him. Continue to um, allow Him to touch our hearts and to touch our lives. Amen? Hallelujah. It is similar manner. The opportunity to practice spiritual discipline is something that we too have great familiarity. We must know the importance of reading God's Word, spending time in prayer, spending time in worship, spending time in the things of God. We know the importance of reading and studying and meditating. So we might be able to look at our past and discover times when we have been faithful, like the church at Philippi was faithful. And this should encourage us to know that we can practice spiritual disciplines. All we need to do is to return to know what we do. So the benefits of spiritual discipline, first, it needs to be practiced. Amen. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Just ignore some of those stuff that you're seeing there. We bind those forces of evil and darkness in the comments there. Spiritual discipline needs to be practiced, not just, as I said, one day, but every day of our life. As we have obeyed, let's continue to obey. Work out your salvation with fear and with trembling. Secondly, we practice spiritual disciplines without complaining. Without what? Complaining. Hallelujah. Verse 3 and 4, he said, For it is God which worketh in you. It is God working in us. 
both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And because God is working in us, do all things without what? Murmuring and without complaining. So I want to encourage us as we practice spiritual discipline, let us not murmur, let us not complain. Like the children of Israel in the wilderness, they murmured. When they was thirsty, they murmured. When they was hungry, they murmured. When they needed clothing, they murmured. They murmured about everything. We got to do things without murmuring. Now, many of us, if not all of us, would say that we desire to have God change us. We desire a deeper walk with God. And we know what needs to be changed. And we, we greatly desire for God to show himself faithful in working in us for his glory. When we practice spiritual discipline, God does change us. Amen. When we begin to discipline ourselves before the mighty hand of God, God sheds away those unwanted fat, spiritual unwanted fat. That is what I'm talking about. Things in our area that needs pruning, that needs cutting, that needs moving so that we could be spiritually fit. God wants us to be spiritually fit. But it's not easy. So let's stop complaining. Stop murmuring. Let's um, put aside the flesh or the arm of flesh and realize that God wants to build us. God wants to mold us. God wants to touch us. He is working in us according to his good purpose. And God is good. And this is not just a cliche statement. This does not mean that all our circumstances are good, but God is good. It doesn't mean that everything will be all right every day, but God will see us through. Amen. And when we look at multiple characters through the Bible, we see that many encountered circumstances, but also we see God using those circumstances to change his people. So when you are faced with different things in life, I encourage us in our spiritual discipline, do not murmur. Amen? Because all that God is doing and all that God is allowing is for His good pleasure. It is to work in us for His glory. So don't complain. When the rain falls, you complain. When the sun hot, you complain. Amen? When there's traffic, when there's no traffic, food too hot, food too cold, food too salty, food not there, food too late. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's allow God to work in us. If we want God to change us in 2021, we got to allow him to do it. Do everything without grumbling and complaining, without arguing, without uh, um, trying to, to, to find fault in everything. Amen. When snow falls, we complain. We don't ask no in Trinidad. We could do it some. Amen. Hallelujah. But we thank God for the ability to rise above murmuring and disputing. So, spiritual discipline needs to be practiced but as we practice spiritual discipline we need to do it without murmuring and complaining and third and last we we need to follow the manual when practicing spiritual disciplines we need to follow what the manual when we are practicing spiritual discipline verse 16 it says holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Amen. Now, I'm sure that there are times we buy stuff. How I many you bought stuff for Christmas? <laughs> and you buy things that need to be assembled. And like good trainees, we would assemble the thing before we read the manual. How many of you like, I have been there. 
I am guilty of that. Trying to put together the thing. And then read the manual when you're getting to trouble. <laughs> we consult the manual after. And we need to say, Lord, forgive us. If we are going to practice spiritual discipline, we need to read the manual first. Amen? We need to read the manual first. So we need to ask God to forgive us of those Christmas mistakes or, or trying to assemble things without uh, reading the manual. Paul said, holding forth the word of life. Amen? Holding forth the word of life. In the original, it means to show a personal action that is to be done on a continual basis. We need to hold the word of God to our heart on a daily basis. Practicing spiritual discipline is something that is to be done over and over and over. We do this by holding firm the word of life. Therefore, the practice of discipline will always involve the study and the application of God's word. As the Apostle Paul said, study to show thyself approved. A workman needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. There's a right way and a wrong way. But we need to read the manual. Amen. God's manual. The Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Amen. We need to get to the word of God. As the psalmist said, meditate upon the word of the Lord day and night, night and day. As Joshua said, meditate upon the word of God day and night, night and day. Even as David said in the book of Psalms, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against thee. So I encourage us, let us practice spiritual discipline. Let us do it without murmuring and let's read the manual. God has given to us instructions how to follow his principles and precepts. And as we do, verse 15 said that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom he shines as lights in the world. So we practice spiritual discipline so that we could shine as lights in a perverse and crooked nation. We live in a world of uh, a, a perverseness and a crooked world. But we need to shine as lights. That's why we need to practice spiritual discipline. And this begins with salvation. Amen. We can know what to do and be found faithful in striving after the things of God without grumbling as we work out our salvation with fear and trembling. Where we have missed the mark, we ask God to forgive us but we continue to work out. Now, salvation is not by work, but we work it out uh, with fear and trembling. Amen. So we begin with Christ. We continue with the word of God. We allow the Holy Spirit to touch us, to bless us, to minister to us. So I want to encourage us to practice spiritual discipline. Discipline our life to fast, to pray to read the Word of God, to study, to meditate, to hold fast to the things of God. And I guarantee you, as we do, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. God will bless our home. God will bless our family. God will bless the work of our hands. God will bless our business. Amen. God will bless our children as we obey the Word of God. As we meditate day and night, thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. So today, I encourage all of us, let's not get lazy, let's not get complacent, let's not get to the place where we feel we know it all. Let us practice spiritual discipline. Let us do it without murmuring and complaining. But as we do it, let us not do it in our own 
understanding in our own viewpoint. But let's do it based on the written manual. God's manual. God's word. God's principles. God's precepts. And I guarantee you, if you follow the manual that God has provided, we will not find ourselves in trouble. Amen? When you're in doubt of something, read the manual, because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing the word of God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you're going to touch us today. You're going to bless us today. Help us to stay on your part for your name's sake. I pray, God, that indeed you would lead us in the paths of righteousness. You would restore our soul. You would help us to work out our salvation with fear and with trembling. Lord, touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch us today, Father, and minister to the needs of every person on this platform today. I pray that you're going to reach out, O oh God, and touch men and women. Lord, as we, O oh God, look forward to the week that is ahead of us, I pray that you will pave the way for us so that, O oh God, we will be physically fit, mentally, O oh God, ready, emotionally charged to take on the challenges that is ahead of us. Cover us with your blood today. Give us a good night rest. And we thank you, God, for blessing us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We thank you for joining us for this short study today on spiritual discipline. We'll continue next Sunday. But remember, in the month of February, we move to a new time on the Zoom platform, 8 p.m. on a Monday. We're going to send out the link as we go along. But do have a blessed day, a blessed evening with your family. And we look forward to morning devotion, 6 a.m. tomorrow, Trinidad time. God bless you. God be with you. Amen and amen.